Good point. Jordan, let's have you jump in on this idea of, of what you see as the pernicious danger of groupthink when it comes to ethnicity, uh, when it comes to gender. Why do you think well, that that's one of the primal sins, in your view, of, of quote, political correctness? Well, I think it's one of the primal sins of identity politics players on the left and the right, just to be clear about that. Personally, since this has got personal at times, I'm no fan of the identitarian right. I think that anybody who plays a game, a, a conceptual game, where group identity comes first and foremost risks an exacerbation of tribalism. It doesn't matter whether it's on the left or the right. Um, with regards to the idea of group rights, well, there's a fundamental, and this is something we've fallen into terribly in Canada, not least because we had to contend with the threat of Quebec separatism, but the, the idea of group rights is extraordinarily problematic because the the, the, the obverse of the coin of individual rights is individual responsibilities. And you can hold an individual responsible, and an individual can be responsible. And so that's partly why individuals have rights. But groups, how do you hold a group responsible? I mean, the whole idea is not, it's not a good idea to hold a group responsible. First of all, it flies in the face of the idea of the sort of justice systems that we've laid out in the West that are essentially predicated first on the assumption of individual innocence, but also on the possibility of individual guilt, not group guilt. We saw what happened in the 20th century many, many times when the idea of group guilt was, it, was, it, it was enabled to get a foothold, let's say, in the polity and in the justice system. It was absolutely catastrophic. And so, okay, fine, group rights. Well, what are you gonna, how are you going to contend with the alternative to that, the opposite of that? Or that where's the group responsibility? And how are you going to keep, how are you going to hold your groups responsible? Well, we don't have to talk about that because we're too concerned with rectifying hypothetical, re rectifying historical injustices, hypothetical and otherwise. And that's certainly not to say that there weren't any shortage of absolutely catastrophic historical injustices. That's not the point. The point is, how you view the situation at the most fundamental level. And group rights are an absolute catastrophe, in my opinion. Come on, let's, uh, Michelle, come in on that point. Mm -hmm. um, the, reason, the reason that Trump and Brexit in Britain and all kinds of nativists all over Europe are succeeding is not the triumph of the right, it's the catastrophic failure of the left. It's our fault. <laughs> we absolutely... My point is not that I've turned to the right or anything like that, or that I'm nice and fluffy and want everybody to be decent. Mm. I'm saying, fuck political correctness. Resist. Fight. If you have a point of view, fight it in the proper manner, using democracy as it should be. Not channels of education, not language. You know, it's so silly. But it, it, there's a chess rule, you know. In chess, the best move to play in chess is not the best chess move, it's the move your opponent least wants you to play. But you At the moment, the... you're being recruiting sergeants for the right. But by women. annoying and upsetting, and instead of fighting, either fighting or persuading. But political correctness is a middle course that simply doesn't work. Well, first That's of all, you, you said be empirical. Now, empirical, as far as I know, the word means that which can be verified or falsified through the senses. Exactly. So if we look at it in an objective um, a way, uh, the, the reality is that people don't have equal access to the means to articulate no, the very no. moment you're talking no, about. I'm talking That's about the one. empirical results of the, this political attitude. I understand yeah. that, but my point is simply this. I'm suggesting to you that people use the weapons at hand. Now, it was Abraham Joshua Heschel, the rabbi, who said everybody's not guilty, but everybody's responsible. Right? That's a distinction there. Mm -hmm. Everybody clearly is not guilty. But what's interesting, look at the flip side. If you have benefited from... 300 years of holding people in servitude, thinking that you did it all on your own. Why can't these people work harder? Let me see, for 300 years, you ain't had no job. So the reality is, for 300 years, you hold people in the bands. You hold them in subordination. You refuse to give them rights. Then all of a sudden, you free them and say you're now individuals, not having the skills, Who's not having the, you the, the, you're referring let, 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 not having the skills. You? I'm talking about America, first of all. I'm talking about American society, first of all. I'm talking about the Northern Hemisphere. I'm talking about every society where enslavement has existed. But I'm speaking specifically of the repudiation of individual rights among people of color in America 
who were denied the opportunity to be individuals. So I see, I obviously and ideally, and I think Michelle Goldberg does too, agree with the emphasis on individuals. What we're saying to you is that we have not been permitted to be individuals. We have not been permitted to exercise our individual autonomy and authority and the refusal to do so, to recognize me as an individual means when you roll up on me and I'm a 12 year old boy in a park and you shoot first, in ways you do to black kids that you don't do to white kids, you are not treating that person as an individual. If we're living in a society where women are subject to aberrant forms of horrid, uh, patriarchal, sexist, and misogynist mm -hmm. behavior, you are not acknowledging the centrality of the individuality of women. You are treating them according to a group dynamic. And if we, if we get beyond the ability of people on the right to do, understand the degree to which they have operated from the basis of benefit from group identity without having said, I end by saying this, the great American philosopher Beyonce knows <laughs> said that it has been said that racism is so American that if you challenge racism, you look like you're challenging America. We are challenging inequality. We are challenging the refusal to see me as an individual. When we overcome that, have at it, we're all on equal no, plane. Okay. So, like, no, I think it's good. good. I think it's good. The pot is getting stirred here. So I've okay. got a couple of questions. So, so let's, let's, your side uh, spoke, so I'm going to go yeah. to Jordan, then to you, Let's Michelle. assume for a moment that I've benefited from my white privilege. Okay, so let's assume that. That's, that's fine. That's yeah, well, assumption. that's what you would say. So, um, um, so let's say mm. here. Let's get precise mm. about this. Okay. Was that in very individual of you? <laughs> let's get precise about this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's get precise. To what degree is my present level of attainment or achievement a consequence of my white privilege? And I don't mean sort of. I mean, do you mean five percent? Do you mean 15%? Do you mean 25%? Do you mean 75%? And what do you propose I do about it? How about a tax? How about a tax that's like specialized for me so that I can account for my damn privilege You're so that I can stop right hearing now. about it? Now, let's get precise about one other thing, okay? We'll get precise about one other thing. Now, precise? Yeah, precise, Preci yes. Mm. And so, if if we can agree, and we haven't, that the left can go too far, which it clearly can, mm -hmm. then how would my worthy opponents precisely define when the left that they stand for has gone too far? You didn't like equity, equality of outcome, I think that's a great marker, but if you have a better suggestion and, and won't sidestep the question, so let's figure out how I can dispense with my white privilege and so that you can tell me when the left has gone too far, since they clearly can. And that's what this debate is about, about political correctness. It's about the left going too far. And I think it's gone too far in many ways. And I'd like to figure out exactly how and when so the reasonable left could make its ascendance again and we could quit all this nonsense. Okay, okay. Michelle, okay. <laughs> Mike, I want to come to you on those, great Michelle, on Jordan's point about how does he, in a sense, get an equal voice in this debate back if it is implied that his participation brings with it this baggage of white privilege that doesn't allow him to see clearly the issues that are before us. But that is to be complicit in the very problem itself, terminologically. You're beginning at a point that's, that's already uh, productive and controversial. You're saying, how can he get his equality back? Who are you talking about? Jordan Peterson, trending number one on Twitter? <laughs> Jordan Peterson, Most with an international, in an international bestseller? I want him to tweet something out about me in my book. <clears throat> Jordan Peterson, right? This is what I'm saying to you. Why the rage, bruh? You, you, you're doing well, but you're a mean, mad white man. And you're going to get us right. And I have never seen so much wine and snowflaking. There's enough wine in here to start a vineyard. And what I'm saying to you empirically and precisely, when you ask the question about white privilege, the fact that you ask it in the way you did, dismissive, pseudoscientific, non-empirical, and without justification, A, the, the truth is that white privilege doesn't act according to uh, quantifiable segments. It's about the degree to which we are willing as a society to grapple with the ideals of freedom, justice, and equality upon which is based. Number two, what's interesting to me, you're talking about not having a collective identity. What do you call a nation? Are you Canadian? Are you Canadian by yourself? 
Are you an individual or are you part of a group? When America formed its union, it did so in opposition to another group. So the reality is, is that those who are part of group identities and politics deny the legitimacy and validity of those groups and the fact that they have been created thusly and then have resentment against others. All I'm asking for is the opportunity. The, this, the, the, the quotation you talk about, the difference between equality of outcome and equality of opportunity, that's a stayed and retried argument, hackneyed phrase derived from the halcyon days of the debate over affirmative action. Are you looking for outcomes that can be determined equally or are you looking for opportunity? If you free a person after a whole long time of oppression and say now you are free to survive, if you have no skills, if you have no quantification, means of existence, what you have done is liberated them into oppression. And all I'm suggesting to you, Lyndon Baines Johnson, one of our great presidents said, if you start a man in a race a hundred years behind, it is awfully difficult to catch up. So I don't think Jordan Peterson is suffering from anything except an exaggerated sense of entitlement and resentment and his own privilege is invisible to him and it's manifest with lethal intensity and ferocity right here on stage. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Jordan, I'm going to have to let you respond to that if you will. Well, what I derive from that series of rebuttals, let's say, is twofold. The first is that saying that the radical left goes too far when they engage in violence is not a sufficient response by any stretch of the imagination because there are sets of ideas in radical leftist thinking that led to the catastrophes of the 20th century and that was at the level of idea not at the level of violent action it's a very straightforward thing to say you're against violence it's like being against poverty it's like you know gen generically speaking decent people are against vo uh, poverty and violence it doesn't address the issue in the least um, and with regards to my privilege or lack thereof I mean, I'm not making the case that I haven't had advantages in my life and disadvantages in my life like most people. You don't know anything about my background or where I came from, and it doesn't matter to you because fundamentally I'm a mean white man. That's a hell of a thing to say in a debate. Just say, very, very brief, because mm. I, I want to move on to men and women. Good the mean, topic the next. Mean, the, the mean, mad, white comment was not predicated upon my historical excavation of your past. It's based upon the evident vitriol with which you speak and the denial of a sense of equanimity among combatants in an argument. So I'm saying again, you're a mean, mad, white man, and the viciousness is evident. Okay. 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 Let's reset. Change the decks here. Let's let's bring uh, Jordan in on this because you've uh, written and commented about a lot. But Stephen, thank you for having me. Yeah. Well, I think I'm I'm going to point out two things again. The first is that my question about when the when the left goes too far still hasn't been answered, and then the second thing I'm going to point out is that, you know, it's conceivable that I am a mean man. You know, I mean. Maybe I'm meaner than some people and not as mean as others. I think that's probably more the case. But I would say the fact that race got dragged into that particular comment is a better exemplar of what the hell I think is wrong with the politically correct left than anything else that could have possibly happened. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, imagine the hurt, the anxiety, um, the insult that you might genuinely feel, um, according to what I felt, was an appropriate comment of description at the moment of its expression. But imagine now those hurt feelings and... Not hurt. Went, <laughs> okay, appalled. you feel great. That's you feel great about that's it. That's really different. I'm not right. a victim. I'm not hurt. You're, I'm appalled. You're not hurt. Okay, you wouldn't be a victim. So what, what's interesting is that whatever uh, non-traditional feelings of empathy you endure at this particular point, <laughs> um, the, the, the point is, imagine then the horrors that so many other others have had to put up with 
for so long when they are refused to acknowledge their humanity. Now, I take your point seriously. So your group let, of let, me, let me finish. Let me finish. Though. Let, me, let me finish. To me. Let me finish, sir. That figures. You're not my inquisitioner. Okay. What I'm saying to you is that when you said you were upset that I added the element of race there, right? When I said mean, mad, white man. Well, what's interesting is that you may have felt that you were being ascribed a group identity to which you do not subscribe. You may have felt that you were being unfairly uh, judged according to your particular race. You may have felt that your individual identity was being besmirched by my rather careless characterization of you. All of which qualifies for uh, a legitimate uh, you know, response to me, but also the point we've been trying to make about the refusal to see our individual existence as women, as people of color, as First Nation people and the like. My point simply has been, the reason I talked about race and that particular characterization, because there's a particular way in which I have come to a city. I don't know if there are a lot of black people out here, not sure, but I constantly come to places and spaces that are not my natural habitat, uh, other than intellectual engagement and the love and the, the fury of rhetorical engagement, yes. But I often go into hostile spaces where people will not vote in favor for my particular viewpoint because I'm interested as an individual of breaking down barriers so that people can understand just how complicated it is. So what I'm saying to you is that I would invite you in terms of the surrender of your privilege to give you a specific, a specific response, come with me to a black Baptist church. Come with me to a historically black college. Come to me to an, to an indigenous or first nations community where we're able to engage in some of the it, lovely conversation, but also to listen and hear. And when I added race to that, I was talking about the historically evinced inability to acknowledge others' pains equally to the one that they are presently enduring. So as a human being, as a human being, I love you as my brother, but I stand by my comment. Well, I've seen the sorts of things that you're talking about. I happen to be an honorary member of an indigenous family, so mm -hmm. don't tell me about what I should go see with regards to oppression. You, you don't know anything about me. You asked me a question, I gave you a response. Yeah. You gave me a generic response, it's a generic, generic race-based response. You. Jordan Peterson, I would like for you to come with me, Michael Eric Dyson, to a black Baptist church. You been to I, one of those? I would, I would be happy yeah. to do that, by Okay, the way. all right, I'm gonna hook you up. I'm gonna hook you up. Okay, right. good. We'll make sure that happens. So, I'm not here to claim that there's no such thing as oppression, unfairness, brutality, discrimination, unfair use of power, all of those. Anyone with any sense knows that hierarchical structures tilt towards tyranny and that we have to be constantly wakeful to ensure that all they are isn't power and tyranny. It's interesting to hear Foucault referred to. It's unfortunate, but it's interesting. You know, because Foucault, like his French intellectual confreres, essentially believed that the only basis upon which hierarchies were established is power. And that's part of this pernicious politically correct doctrine that I've been speaking about. When a hierarchy becomes corrupt, then the only way to ascend it is to exercise power. That's essentially the definition of a tyranny. But that doesn't mean that the imperfect hierarchies that we have constructed in our relatively free countries, which at least tilt somewhat towards competence and ability, as evidenced by the staggering achievements of civilization that we've managed to produce, it doesn't mean that the appropriate way of diagnosing them is to assume without reservation unidimensionally that they're all about power and as a consequence everyone who occupies any position within them is a tyrant or a tyrant in the making. And that is certainly the fundamental claim of someone like Foucault. And it's part and parcel of this what would you call it, this ideological catastrophe that's political correctness. I'm not here to argue against progress. I'm not here to argue against equality of opportunity. Anyone with any sense understands that even if you're selfish, you're best served by allowing yourself access to the multiplicitous talents of everyone and to discriminate against them for arbitrary reasons unrelated to their competences. It's abhorrent. That has nothing to do with the issue at hand. It's, it, it isn't that good things haven't happened in the past and should continue to happen. That's not the point. The point is the point my compatriot Fry made, which is, well, we can agree on the
catastrophe, and we can agree on the historic inequity, but there's no way I'm going to agree that political correctness is the way to address any of that, and there's plenty of evidence to the contrary, some of which I would say was displayed quite clearly tonight. Thank you.